Well, as promised, uh, a lot has happened since the last time we met. Um, I have got my electronics installed. ESC is water soldered up and wired. Servos are mounted. I do apologize. This thing is getting really hard to keep in the frame. Um, Neo is mounted back here. Preliminary wiring done. Tail servo mounted. Um, I did not bother to try to film any of that because how people run their wires and how people install servos, that's very subjective to your personal preference. Um, just a couple of things to note. You got to be careful bringing the wires past the motor, the motor rather, because the canopy does snug up there. So I opted to split the RPM wire going down a different side so that I could uh, not have as much hanging off this side. Also, um, I did have to use some extensions. The Castle um, ESC lead and the uh, RPM leads were not long enough to reach the back. It's a pretty big helicopter. Um, so having the, the RPM wire on the other side allowed me to get this extension nice and flat so it's not going to interfere with the swash plate. Uh, I might have to do some fine-tuning that wiring as I get the helicopter built and go through the setup, make sure there's nothing interfering with the travels of the swash or the servos because there, there are a lot of wires that run through the areas where the linkage goes. Um, but I'll fine-tune that when I'm doing the setup, no problem. Um, next, if I remember correctly in the manual, I'm pretty sure that next we need to start talking about the head linkage and the rotor head. Let's double check that real quick. Yep, we're going to clear the deck. I'm going to get out my linkages and get those pre-assembled. And uh, when I come back, I'll go through the, the recommended links on the, on the swash plate and pitch links. Welcome back. Well, as you can see, I have the, the uh, main rotor head and the swash plate linkage and the uh, pitch grip arms laid out in front of us. The next step in the manual is not actually the pitch links like I believed. It is the swash plate, which is good. I love dealing with the swash plate. Um, this is another area where we've uh, uh, Matt has uh, changed the game a little bit with his designs. Uh, this is no longer a press fit swash. Everything is user serviceable and comes apart. Uh, we are going to um, tear this guy down and look at the individual components and then put her back together. Make sure everything's Loctited. Uh, as you can see, all these balls are loose. Um, there are eight two millimeter bolts here that we'll have to pull out and uh, Loctite, uh, as well as uh, check the inner ring for movement uh, there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera, set the, the rotor head and the pitch arms aside, and break down a swash plate. All right, as you can see, we now have our swash plate completely torn down. Um, this is the um, outer ring. Now, I did not press the bearings out of the outer ring. Um, I didn't want to risk damaging them. But to get them out, you would just loosen this uh, three mil bolt here, and then you might need a little bit of press pressure, but these uh, bearings can, are, can be replaced without replacing the whole swash plate now, which is really nice. Um, uh, looks like a Delrin Heim ball. You've got these Delrin um, bushings that actually go in the two halves of the inner ring um, to act, are exactly that. They are the surfaces that the ball uh, moves on, so they doesn't bind on the aluminum. Aluminum doesn't tear it up. And then, of course, you've got the, the lower and the upper inner swash ring. These are the two pieces that come together. Not only hold the hind ball together, but this is where your inner swash balls bolt. A uh, reassembly of this is pretty straightforward. All the bolts get Loctite. Um, nothing, on the, nothing on this system had Loctite when I pulled it apart. So just pay particular attention. These bushings don't have a wrong, right or wrong. Just make sure you definitely get one on each side. And... Um, Make sure when you're assembling the balls, the short swash balls go on the inner ring, the long swash balls go on the outer ring. It'll actually be pretty easy because if you try to put the long swash balls on the inner ring, you'll be one short. Um, and then this is the anti-rotation pin. It's nothing more than a uh, three by 12 with a brass spacer and uh, three radial bearings. These actually go in the anti-rotation guide and the bearings allow it to keep it from rotating but travel up and down the um, guide smoothly. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this. Again, this is an area I'm going to use red Loctite. This is an area that will cause catastrophic failure if there's a problem. Um, so I am going to use red. Personal preference there, it will make disassembly more difficult. You'll have to warm it up. But um, something comes apart on this, you know, you're not having a good day. So I think it's worth the effort. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera and we'll start Loctite. Okay, our swash plate's all the way back together. Inner ring moves nice and smooth. No play, red Loctite on all four inner swash balls, 
red Loctite on all three outer swash balls as well as the auto rotation pin. Just be very careful with the auto rotation pin that you do not let red Loctite wick up past that brass, that brass bushing. Otherwise you're going to impede the performance of the rotation inner rotation pin bearings. But pretty straightforward. The hind ball moves nice and smooth. Inner all swash ball is snug. Uh, make sure you double check this bolt, this clamp bolt, which um, is used to take up any any uh, um, excess play in the in the bearings. On mine was loose. I pull it out and use a little blue. It's a technically a pinch joint. You shouldn't have to use Loctite, but I felt better about putting a little blue on it. And swash plate looks good, ready to go on the helicopter. I also jumped ahead. The very next step has us do the pitch links. Excuse me, the servo to swash links. Um, and I went ahead and did those up. And putting the links together is is um, tedious and annoying. I didn't want you to sit there and watch me do it. But one thing I do want to point out, and I'm going to zoom this camera in real good here. For the first time ever, Matt is shipping turnbuckles with the helicopter. And this is a neat little addition. Um, one side of this is right hand thread, one side is left hand thread. You tell the difference. There's a little um, mark, it's right here on mine. You can see that on one side has that extra stripe. That's the left handed side. Makes it real easy because you can use the turnbuckles to get the links exactly the same, which is pretty nice. Now, Matt and uh, did a lot of testing with the links, and the math comes out. You, per the manual, you want the distance between the inside distance between these two pins links rather to be 21 and a half millimeters and I took my mics uh, zeroed them out set them out to 21 and a half locked them down tight and I and I ran them all in till they're all three exactly 21 and a half and the nice thing about turnbuckles you can get them to exactly 21 and a half it's pretty nice now don't forget when you're putting these together while two of them the swash balls and the servo balls are in perfect alignment on the elevator servo because the servo is rotated um, they're clocked 90 degrees from each other, so just make sure you pay attention um, to that. Also, there is a um, an inside and outside on these links. It's really hard to tell on the camera, but I'm going to try. See how one side has that little boss, and the other side doesn't? It's like a little halo. That's the outside right there, no halo. That's the inside with the halo. It's really hard to tell on the camera, but it's pretty obvious in person. Just remember that when you're um, sizing these and putting them on the helicopter, the side with the halo is the inside. So speaking of sizing, uh, very important, we talked about this before, uh, Bodo sizer, these links are molded. There will be some tolerance differences. You do not want them to be super snug. I'm going to take this opportunity while I've got the swash off to um, size these links, size both ends. Um, be a little easier now on my table and I'm trying to do it on the bird. You want these to snap on and off crisply and be snug but move freely. You don't want there to be any play. If you oversize one of these, um, it's okay. The extra parts bag has one or two extras for you. But it's very important that you don't just assume these are okay and put them on. If these are super tight, you can really work in your servos and you might have some uh, tuning problems with your fly barless unit. So. Uh, go ahead, I'm going to cut the camera, I'm going to size those, I'm going to install the links and the swash on the helicopter, and we'll be back. Okay, well there you have it, swash plate is on, all three of these pitch links move nice and free, sized well. Um, obviously we're not going to try to worry about the getting the swash level just now, I'll do that when I do the head setup later. Um, next step in our book, I believe, is the rotor head itself. Yep, so we're going to go ahead and set the set, set stuff aside. And I'm going to break this gut bad boy down, come back and talk about the parts. Okay, now as you see I have the head mostly torn down. I have not taken the swash followers apart yet. I'll do that after I've got the grips assembled. Um, over here in this bag are the actual grip arms. We'll talk about those in a second. I want to talk about what's inside the head here. Obviously most of this is pretty straightforward. You have a 10 millimeter spindle with quite massive, I believe those are eight, seven millimeter, eight, uh, six millimeter, I think, spindle bolts, night and massive with shims. Inside the grips you'll find everything you expect. You have an outer radial bearing, a one millimeter shim, thrust bearing, radial bearing, another shim. Then on the other side of the head you have everything that matches. One millimeter shim, radial bearing, thrust bearing, outer one millimeter shim, and another radial bearing. The actual components of the head are not any different than the E7 or N7 or really any head out there, with one exception. This system 
offers a progressive dampening system right out of the box. You have um, four quad, called quad dampers, so a total of four dampers. The red ones are a softer, and the blacks are the harder. Um, the manual, I believe, does tell me the actual durometer thick, uh, of them. Yes, the red ones are an 80 durom um, durometer, and the black ones are a 90. You know, that's just a fancy way of saying the black ones are harder than the red ones. They're easier. The red ones um, smush easier. So what we do here is, out of the box, I recommend you put the soft ones in the middle and the hard ones on the outer. On the outer. I recommend you start there. Um, if you're doing F3C, F3N, really low head speed stuff, you probably want to order another set of red ones and run all four red. Uh, if you're a smack crack 3 d -er, you might appreciate all four black. Me, on my alpha model, I've been running as the, as the factory recommends. The red ones in the center, black ones on the outer. Everything greased up very well. This is another application for our Bodaloo. You want to grease these dampeners up very, very well so that they can move around and uh, compress and release inside the head. You also want to lubricate this axle uh, uh, pivot. This goes here in the middle and actually pivots with the swash. Um, properly lubricating the dampeners is going to do a couple of things. It's going to help uh, the dampeners la la last longer. It will also help uh, uh, prevent wobbles. Um, I'm going to tell you with the stock configuration of dampers, uh, I have tested head speeds as low as 1300 and as high as 2000 and anywhere in between in 50, 50 RPM increments and not had a single wobble. It's absolutely been the smoothest flying um, uh, head I've ever built. So uh, I'm going to assemble it per the factory uh, recommendations. Grease everything up, red inners, black outers. Uh, again, you want to lubricate these thrust bearings. There's no grease in them already. I've got my Bodo Lube handy that'll be put in there. Um, and when I assemble this, I know I said I like to use red. Given the sheer size of these spindle bolts, I am going to use blue Loctite on them. Um, red would probably mean they would never come apart. There's just so much threads there. They're going to have plenty of power. And then again, I have my trusty um, red net grippy here that's going to give me, um, allow me to hold the spindle while I tighten the outer um, spindle bolt. And then I can assemble everything and use my dual Allens to tighten her up. So I'm going to cut the camera, lubricate everything, build the head, and when I come back we'll be talking about these pitch links. There it is, all assembled and lubricated. Uh, grips move nice and um, spin freely, have no in, in and out play. Uh, tons of grease on the dampeners, tons of grease in the thrust bearings. It's a very well built head. Um, I love the size of this. This head is just so much bigger than the E7 head. Um, it really does have a presence in the air, it's fantastic. Um, now I'm going to um, cut the camera and tear down the follower arms um, and uh, pull the pitch links out and we'll talk about all that next. Okay, real quick. I'm only going to tear down one swash follower at a time because there's a lot of little shims in here I don't want to lose them. Um, inside each swash follower you have um, two radial bearings and a spacer in between them. Um, between each the follower arm and the head and the follower arm and the... Um, washout adapter, there are tiny little shims. I mean, these things got to be like 0.2. The purpose there is the shims um, connect the inner bearing race of the bearing to the out to the stationary portion of the head. So the arm can rotate on the bearing and not scratch up the head and bind. So um, one important tip, though, is actually the stud that goes into the... I'm going to find the right driver. I can't find my small driver. Helps if I take it out of the box. The stud that goes up inside this this um, follower arm. Um, is actually a set screw. I'll have to uh, find the right driver here in a second. You want to pull this out first before you try to remove this three mil bolt, or you just this set screw is just going to tear the threads up on that three mil. So back the follower link out and the stud out before you loosen up this switch this screw. So as it is, you can see it's all, it's dis, it's all disassembled. I'm going to assemble it all back with Loctite in the appropriate places and uh, do the other follower arms as well. Well, there it is. Washout arms are done. Um, have not tightened these bolts yet, obviously, because those are the pinch bolts for the head. I'm going to put it on. Real quick, I want to talk about these uh, pitch arms real fast. get a lot of questions about this. The manual shows 
that the pitch is adjustable. You can actually adjust the resolution of the head uh, to your needs. So with the ball in the outer location as it's recommended in the manual, this is where 90% of the users are going to like, probably even 95%. Um, with my V-Bar, it is uh, generating really good um, values. I think I'm at um, 98 for collective and uh, right at 100 for a cyclic. Did not feel the need to do any adjustments there. If you are a crack smack pilot and you want to offer some extreme cyclic throws uh, and extreme pitch ranges, then you, you can move this ball to the inner location. But I strongly recommend you try it here first. You get that kind of cyclic um, throw in there, you could have some boom strikes real easy. So uh, it's adjustable for those who need it, those who, who um, feel they, they need it. But uh, I feel most people are going to like it on the outer location. Uh, they attach to the head in the, in the standard way. There are two linked, um, two separate links. The um, two bolts per arm. The longer ar longer bolt goes towards the center of the head, where the head is thicker, and the shorter arm goes towards the outer edge, where the where the arm is thinner. It makes pretty pretty good sense. Just be careful when you're assembling this. Remember, this is a leading edge pitch helicopter, and when you mount these, make sure you mount them on the head appropriately. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera and get those mounted up, and then that will probably be it for this video. And tomorrow we will start talking about the tail.